Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it, and I'd be able to send my best to your inbox on a daily basis. If you like our watches, you can buy them on our website, thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches 24 hours a day on thewatchbox.com. We are global. Today we're discussing the Omega Seamaster Professional Diver 300 meter America's Cup limited edition of 9,999 pieces from 2000. This was really the beginning of Omega's modern series of partnerships with Emirates Team New Zealand and its predecessor syndicates. A limited edition with an uncommon fusion of stainless steel and white gold, not something you commonly see with Omega. It's a handsome and classically profiled Seamaster 300 that has a little bit extra exclusivity and finery to it. 41 millimeters across the round of the case. You can see it wears well on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, and indeed, I own the standard Seamaster Professional from this era. It fits a treat, 16 happy years I endorse. Now, in terms of thickness, this one's not terribly thick. Pre-coaxial, it's only 12.2 millimeters thick, which is slimmer than the later caliber 2500. 48 millimeters, or I should say more like 47.5 lug to lug. It does stretch its wings a bit when you include the solid end links of the bracelet. It measures a more robust 53 millimeters across the wrist. I believe you could wear this watch on a strap on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. With this bracelet and its solid end links, I would say 14 centimeters, probably the lower limit. It's a handsome bracelet. Anyone who recognizes this bracelet knows that it debuted in the 90s and was a staple of the Bond series of Seamasters. So named because they helped to launch Omega's career with Agent 007 from 1995's GoldenEye, they were were really a hybrid of a dress watch and a dive watch, truth be told, and that continued on the bracelet itself, which featured rounded profiles and intermediate links with polished highlights that felt equally appropriate for diving, yes, but also for elegant dinners, opera, genteel occasions, and dress cuffs. This is a more aesthetically versatile bracelet than Rolex's 1990s three-link oyster. And I'll also say, back in the 90s and early 2000s, this clasp was leagues better than the stamped Rolex Rolex oyster clasps. Machined from a solid billet of steel, it looks and feels as robust as it is. It inspires confidence, and with twin trigger release, it has the advantage all over the old clamshell closed Rolex oyster bracelets, which frankly felt a little bit de classe for the price point at the time. This, even 25 years after it first saw the market, still feels great. Robust, machined out from solid components, with tight tolerances that close with a snick and a snap. You can still use this clasp over anything from a dive suit to a thick winter coat. Of course, because this is an older Omega, they still use pins and sleeves for the bracelet, but you'll note the important things never change. Underneath, huge channels to aerate the wrist on a hot day, as well as avoid pinching skin or pulling hair. The case profile is very familiar. Sheer sides with linear satin finish running from end to end with polished bevels, Speedmaster fans, Seamaster fans, you're going to recognize this case profile. However, here it is executed a bit differently, as you can see. A sense of occasion, as well as declaration of limited edition status on the crown side. The bezel itself, and we're going to get a little bit closer here and try to improve our focus, but the bezel itself is white gold. So, whereas the standard bonds as we like to call this generation of Seamaster, would have featured anodized aluminum inserts. What you're getting here is more like what you see on a Rolex Yacht Master, with a combination of polish and media blasted finish that is exceptionally attractive and more scratch resistant than an anodized surface. The detent is very satisfying. You will not be disappointed by the feel or the report. Line up the luminescent pearl with the broadsword hands, and you have an impromptu 0 to 60 minute timer. I happen to prefer this to a chronograph, and tell me I'm wrong, but what's easier to read from a minute standpoint? This, broadsword hands against the bezel, or this, minute register? Yeah, you gotta squint to see the minutes here. This is common sense, and it gives you minutes to 60. The best chronograph ever made, that's the dive bezel. Now you'll note that there is a departure from the Bond style dial, with the indices and the hands being both larger and different in their shape. Now, 
I have the 2006 Casino Royale limited edition that illustrates what a Bond dial looks like. Absent the Geneva wave or the Omega wave on the dial base, you can see what the Bond hands skeletonized and the round luminescent plots looked like back in that era. This is just more visible, day or night. The contrast is higher. The loom plots are brighter at night, and you'll also see a little bit of that beloved Omega wave dial base. Again, no getting away from the limited edition status of this watch. You can see America's Cup blazing on the dial, reminding you that back in 2000, this thing was the bomb. It also featured a monotone date disc that made the date a little bit more low-key, although with white on black printing, it remains plenty legible when you do want to reference your date. Now, the crown threaded down, combining with the helium escape valve to give this watch impressive diving credentials. 300 meters water resistant. The helium escape valve is there for you saturation divers who need to avoid a crystal blowout due to accumulated helium in your watch when you are surfacing. The crown itself, allowing you to gain access to the hacking or stop seconds function of the caliber 1120. And of course, there is a quick set for rapidly cycling the date should it run down. Let's take a look at the case back. You can see it is a commemorative case back. Just under 10,000 pieces, the demand for these seems to be pretty brisk and robust. So though they made almost 10 grand, nevertheless, these tend to sell quickly, so they're widely sought. The design is unique. This is not a standard SMP300 case back, so there's a sense of occasion here too. And you'll note chronometer written on the case back to assure you that despite its absence on the otherwise quite clean dial. This is a COSC certified precise Swiss timekeeper. Now, since it's pre-coaxial, it's beaten away at 28,800 vibrations per hour, chronometer certified, 44 hour power reserve. It's a little bit upgraded from a standard ETA 2892. Omega added two jewels as well as custom finishing to improve the robustness, winding efficiency, as well as aesthetics of the movement, though only your watchmaker is really going to know on that last count. Rest assured, it's a tough and reliable automatic caliber. You can see this limited edition from the early years of Omega's America's Cup involvement and make it yours on our website. And we're back with the Omega Seamaster Professional 300 meter America's Cup Limited Edition. This is where the broadsword hands and the larger luminescent plots compared to the standard bond really pay dividends. This is a highly functional watch after dark, very readable in the dark, even with a light charge, this one glows like a torch. Your America's Cup ship sails on our website.